This very place that I stand now, this abandoned wasteland of a stadium that once used to stand, was the first place that the best ever manager in football history learned his managerial trade. Right, hello and welcome to another video. This is one of my most requested videos. A team that used to play in a legendary stadium just over there, but now are pretty much kind of homeless. East Stirlingshire used to play at their old ground called Furs Park. They now have to share with their big local rivals, Falkirk. And I do just want to point out quickly before we get into the video that I am still able to travel around different areas. Level four areas, the whole country of Scotland's in level four. I am able to do this because it's my job. If you go on the ScotGov website, it does say that you can travel for work or for seeking employment so yes I am able to do this because it is my job. The official advice when filming is to film with as small a crew as possible I'm just one person so it really couldn't be much safer than that everything I do I stick to the rules and yeah like I say I'm very safe in what I do and uh, yeah I think also what I do is quite essential and it offers you guys a reprieve from the mundaneness of the current world that we all live in and I think a lot of you enjoy that and enjoy the content and enjoy seeing different stadiums and stuff when you yourself may not be able to see your football club that being said, please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're not going to want to miss out on all the content I've got coming up once a few restrictions are lifted. And yeah, videos are still coming in this time, but yeah, you don't want to miss out on when they get even bigger and even better afterwards. So yeah, please do subscribe. Thank you very much. Right, and before we get into uh, the abandoned stadium, which is just behind me here, um, this video is sponsored by One Football. If you want to support the channel, then please do go down to the first link in the description box below and download one football it really is one of the best apps out there that will keep you in the loop with your team if you spot a random team you can star them and make them your favorites for instance you can find Falkirk I'll be going to Falkirk later on you can find them see how they're doing as you can see from the app that's on screen just now they are top of league one and so they're a big team here in Scotland but these leagues have been suspended for a long time now and if you want to keep up to date with when there's any news related to Falkirk when the leagues might resume then download one football follow Falkirk and you won't be kept out of the loop on anything related to them and there's loads of clubs on there look it has Falkirk so I'm pretty sure it's gonna have your club as well yes we're about to head down to Falkirk soon but we are about to go and explore the abandoned stadium too but before we do please do go please do go down to the first link in the description box below and download the app it would really support my channel and it's completely free first link thank you very much right so just check this out now this is what used to be a football stadium now I'm gonna to have to be very careful that I don't slip over here yeah look this is open you can see dog um, paw prints in the snow here so people have been walking their dog here but I'm approaching the abandoned stadium of East Stirlingshire right let's go have a look around whoa this is mad but yeah at Rosyth and um, Kafkin Park at least you could there's like signs to tell you that it was a stadium. The only way that I can tell that this was once a ground is just the kind of flatness of the earth here and then the kind of banks over there where I guess the stands would have been at one point, but even here, there's no crash barriers. There's no sign of a club. There's no badge anywhere. There's no seats left over from anything. Not that I can see anyway, but we'll keep exploring. But let me tell you a little bit more about the club that used to play here, East Stirlingshire. The official club's formation date is 1881. However, they first played their first ever game in 1880 under a different name, under the name of a local cricket team which started a football club and they started a football club called Britannia. It wasn't until a year later that they uh, became East Stirlingshire, 1881. Their first ever game in 1880 as Britannia was uh, against Falkirk, Falkirk's second team rather, and they lost 7-0. Despite being one of the early clubs to take up the Scottish Cup with their SFA membership, they lost their first ever Scottish Cup match in 1882 and were eliminated in one match. The Stirlingshire FA was formed shortly after and uh, East Stirlingshire, as they were then known, were um, quite successful in the Stirlingshire Cup, which was part of the Stirlingshire FA. And yeah, look here, you can see now, these I guess are parts of the old ground. I suppose, that have just been left to rot. But yeah, um, East Stirlingshire were early members of the Stirlingshire FA with teams like Falkirk and uh, Stenhouse Muir and stuff that would eventually join, I suppose. And yeah, they, um, they did quite well initially, winning four of the earliest editions of the Stirlingshire Cup. They even beat Falkirk 9-0 in the 1888 final and uh, yeah, exacted their revenge over Falkirk when uh, obviously Falkirk beat them in their first ever match, 7-0. So let's just batter my way through here. Just got whipped in the face. 
Ow, and it's quite cold today as you can see. But um, yeah, no, I'll tell you now more about the stadium that once stood here because it gets quite amazing because one of the world's best ever managers, I'm not going that way, one of the world's best ever managers that we recognize today once managed here. So let me get into that. In the early 1900s though, East Stirlingshire played in a different stadium at a place called Bainsford. Yeah, Merchin, Merchiston Park they used to play at and they had to leave that place in 1920 because of a railway line that was put in. And in 1921, they moved here to Furs Park. Their first ever game when they moved here was against Edinburgh Giants, heart of Midlothian. In more modern times, upkeep of the stadium was hard and very financially straining for the club and uh, they weren't able to keep it going for financial reasons. They weren't able to uh, make the amendments to the stadium that they had to in the modern day to make it safer for fans. And so, sadly, they had to abandon it. Their last ever game here, competitive game here, was a 3-1 home win against Montrose, which meant that for the sixth, that 3-1 victory, sorry, meant that they wouldn't finish bottom for the sixth consecutive year of the entire SPFL. So they had finished bottom of the entire SPFL League Two for five years in a row. And then their last game here, they won, which meant they didn't finish bottom that year. But I hear a lot of you asking who aren't fully aware of the Scottish pyramid, how could you finish bottom of the entire league system, but still stay in it for five years? Well, we'll get onto that a little bit later on. I'll tell you a little bit more about what league they're in now and kind of, uh, yeah, they're really poor form in the 2000s when they just would finish bottom every year. A little bit later, I'll tell you a bit more about that when we get to uh, their current stadium, which they ground share at with Falkirk. But let me just take you back a little bit to the mid-1970s. In June 1974, Alex Ferguson was appointed manager of East Stirlingshire Football Club. He was paid just £40 a week to be their manager here, and this very place that I stand now, this abandoned wasteland of a stadium that once used to stand, was the first place that the best ever manager in football history learnt his managerial trade. He was said to be pretty strict even in these early days of his management career. And uh, let me just read out a quote by uh, former East Stirlingshire striker Bobby McCull uh, McCulley. I've never been afraid of anyone before, but Ferguson was a frightening bastard from the start. And yeah, just a few months after his appointment here, I think it was June that he got appointed, by October, St Mirren had come in for him. And although St Mirren were in a league below at the time, they were considered a bigger club. And so after a little bit of deliberation, to and fro in, he even got some advice off of Jock Steen. Sir Alex Ferguson left Furs Park and went across to Love Street. Anyway, yeah, fast forward 30, 40 years, and uh, East Stirlingshire was still playing here at, uh, at Dens Park. However, yes, they were on bad form. They were constantly bottom of League Two and uh, the club seemed to be dwindling rather. But yeah, they were due to leave their stadium. And uh, where were they planning to go? Like, you can't just leave a stadium and not play anywhere. They initially had a five-year agreement with Stenhouse Muir FC. My friends over at Stenhouse Muir, oh, how I miss going to Ockleview. But yes, um, they had a five-year agreement to go and ground share at Ockleview, and that was in 2008. It's now 2021, and they still don't have a home of their own. But they do ground share with Falkirk. And yeah, they now play at the home of big local rivals Falkirk. I've been here for a stadium tour before, so I will include some images of the stadium just now. I absolutely love this ground and uh, yes, um, feel a bit sorry for Falkirk who are a club who uh, can no longer play at the moment because their league is obviously shut. I mentioned that earlier during the one football segment and uh, yeah, I mean, Falkirk at a massive stadium like this, professional club, you know, aren't allowed to play, whereas semi-pro Alloa, bottom of the championship, can with a much smaller ground. I mean, at least some football is on, but I do think the fact that teams like Falkirk and Partick Thistle especially can't play is just absolute madness for them. But yeah, Falkirk are an extremely welcoming club and one of the nicest that I've come across in my kind of 
yeah, Scottish vlogs so far. So a huge thank you to them. Their welcomeness didn't just extend to me, but it obviously extends to clubs around their area. Look at East Stirlingshire. They have played here since 2018, getting on for three years now. But it's fair to say there's a huge gulf between the two these days. East Stirlingshire are in the Lowland League. And like I mentioned earlier, they finished bottom of the SPFL for about five years in a row, I think. I think once they beat Montrose, they stopped themselves being the sixth year in a row finishing bottom of the SPFL. And for years and years and years, the SPFL was a closed off pyramid system to the teams that were in there. And to call it the SPFL, the Scottish Professional Football League, I think is a, a little bit disingenuous to the rest of the teams in Scotland because it wasn't the SPFL, it was the 42 teams PFL. It was, uh, yeah, like teams from outside, it couldn't get in unless someone went bust and, uh, and uh, you bid your way in. But nowadays there is a kind of route to it, I guess, where the Highland or the Lowland Leagues play off in a final against each other or whatever the champions and then they play the team that finished bottom of the league two it's still not easy to get in it is still extremely hard for teams that are ambitious to get in but it can be done look at edinburgh city and look at cove rangers however yes the fact that east sterlingship finished bottom of the entire you know league system for five years i think it breeds complacency within scottish football that that was allowed to happen i mean like if you know, if you're a club in League Two and you know that someone's already, always going to finish bottom of the league, then what's the point in you strengthening your squad? What's the point in investing in that new stand to bring more fans in? What's the point in you investing in new players that are going to make you better? You may as well just, you know, do what you've done the whole time and just survive and not thrive. At least now, like, teams can get into the um, league system here. But yes, currently a Lola League team plays here at the Grand Falkirk Stadium. However, yes, I guess they would eventually one day want to get to a stadium of their own. But yeah, East Stirlingshire have had plans scuppered over the years to... Uh, to rebuild a new place or a new home or a new stadium for themselves. They've had their plans, like I say, scuppered for financial reasons. East Stirlingshire fans, if there's any of you watching right now, how does this make you feel about the club? How does it give your club a identity? Did you, did you have a bigger identity as a club when you were over at Dens Park? Is it hard now to be a club without a stadium? Do let me know kind of the nuances as an East Stirlingshire fan, what it means for you and how you feel about the club. I mean, Surely the atmosphere was better at the old place. Obviously, they had to leave there due to safety reasons or whatever, which I totally understand. But surely if there was just like a few hundred people at a match inside this stadium in the Lowland League, the atmosphere would be almost non-existent. But yeah, East Stirlingshire, I wouldn't write them off, of course. I absolutely love Scottish football and this entire level of football, the Lowland League. I think I've given it more coverage than anybody else. And yeah, I absolutely love it. I love the clubs in there and just the history of them as well. I mean, they now play here and they used to have Sir Alex Ferguson as their manager and had such a legendary stadium. They've done a lot for Scottish football in that they've had Fergie as their manager. I mean, that in itself is mad. And yeah, all the best to East Stirlingshire as a club. I do hope they're able to bounce back up into the league system and eventually find a place that they can call home. From playing their first ever game as a club against Falkirk to now sharing their stadium, East Stirlingshire and Falkirk have always been completely linked. And uh, yeah, the link still goes on to this day, all the way from the 1800s to 2020, which is a nice touch from these two local rivals, I guess you could call them. Please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it. The videos are gonna keep coming. Like I said earlier, I'm still able to film because it's my job, I can't really go in anywhere, but I'm gonna make videos outside side like this because it's the safest thing to do non-contact with anyone all that kind of stuff do let me know below if uh, you'd like me to go anywhere else if there's anywhere i haven't covered yet please like i say yes yeah, subscribe there's loads more coming and drop me a comment below if you're an east sterling shift fan do also download one football it's the first link in the description box below and it's a top quality app i'll leave some videos around my head as ever so you can keep watching my content thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one